Hello, I'm Doug DeWitt, Transfer Paper Product Manager here at Condi Systems. Today's video is an addition to a video that we previously shot talking about toner contamination with inside of an Oki Fuser. This video, we're going to show you specifically how to clean out an Oki Data Fuser which has toner contamination. So what we're going to do is take you through step by step on cleaning your Oki Data Fuser to show you the do's and don'ts that you need to perform this process. But now, let me show you the items that you will need in order to clean out your fuser section successfully. My preference for cleaning your fuser section is a can of acetone. Besides the acetone, you're also going to need some sponge swabs, a flathead screwdriver, a Sharpie marker, and some plain paper. Other items that can be used to clean your fuser section, a can of denatured alcohol or pure isopropyl alcohol, some lint-free cloth, preferably microfiber cloth, and a number two pencil. Now let me show you how these items are used to clean your fuser. Here we have a fuser section from an Oki Data C8600 color laser printer. It's similar to a fuser section found in an Oki Data C8800, slightly bigger than the fuser sections in the A size units, such as the 5500, 5800, 6050, or 6150, but the layout for all these fusers are similar. First, what I want to do is identify the front of the fuser section and the back of the fuser section. Pay close attention to the two gear wheels located on this side. We're going to use these gear wheels to advance the fuser roller inside of the assembly. Also note this tab here, which opens up the back door of the fuser, which makes it easier to clean. Now I'm going to lay the fuser down so I can show you how to get started. On the back of the fuser assembly, notice the two gear wheels located here. First, what we need to do is move the outside gear wheel down so that we can lock the inside gear wheel into position to advance the fuser roller inside of the assembly. You'll notice here that you'll feel some resistance pushing this gear wheel down, which is why you might need a flat-headed screwdriver to stick inside of the teeth to gear wheel to help you advance it. But you will advance the outside gear wheel until you hear the unit pop. When the unit pops, that means that we can now move the fuser roller inside of the assembly with this inside gear wheel here. To dictate my starting point for the inside gear wheel, I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and mark one of the teeth of the gear wheel to designate my starting point. Something to note, as far as a revolution turn of the gear wheel, I cannot necessarily guarantee that it equals one full revolution of the fuser roller inside of the fuser assembly. So as we're cleaning, we want to make sure that we pass our mark two or three times to make certain that we get the entire fuser roller within the fuser assembly. Now that I have my gear wheel marked, I'm going to flip my unit to the front side so I can show you how to clean it. Now we're back to the front section of our fuser assembly. If you were to look inside of the fuser assembly, you should see two rollers. While our camera cannot show you both rollers, they are there. There's a top roller, colored orange, which is your fuser roller. The bottom roller, covered purple, is the feed roller. What we need to make sure is that we do not scratch the orange fuser roller inside of the fuser assembly. If we scratch this orange roller with anything hard, we will ruin the fuser, which is why we recommend using a sponge-tipped swab. Now that I have my fuser in front of me, I'm going to take my sponge-tipped swab, dip the swab into my acetone, Gently place the swab in between the two rollers and move the swab in one direction. 
like so. Once we have swabbed this section, we will use the inside gear wheel to slightly advance the roller, like so, and continue our cleaning process, gently inserting the swab in between the two rollers and always wiping in one direction. If you don't have sponge swabs, you could use a number two pencil and a lint-free cloth. Take your lint-free cloth, wrap it around the eraser tip of your number two pencil. Take the tip, dip it into your acetone or isopropyl alcohol, gently insert inside of the fuser, and brush in one direction. You want to repeat this process until you've gone through two or three revolutions of the inside gear wheel, which you have designated with a Sharpie mark on that wheel. Now that we've gone through two or three revolutions of our inside gear wheel, and we've assured ourselves that we have cleaned the entire fuser roller, which again is the orange roller inside of the fuser assembly, now we're going to perform a simple test to see if we've cleared the fuser assembly of toner contaminants. As you will notice, I have an eight and a half inch by 11 inch sheet of paper lined up to enter my fuser section. I'm going to use the inside gear wheel to physically advance this sheet of paper through the fuser assembly. A few things that this will do, one, it will help remove any excess acetone or isopropyl alcohol that may be inside of the fuser assembly. Second, we can check to see if there are any black marks on the sheet as it comes out of the fuser assembly. If there are black marks on our sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, we still have contaminants within the fuser section and we need to repeat the process. However, if our sheet comes out clean, then we have successfully cleaned our fuser section of toner contamination. Since we saw no contaminants on our sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper as we passed it through the fuser assembly, it's safe to say that we can now load this fuser back into our unit and begin printing. A few things of note, since we've cleaned this fuser with acetone, we want to wait at least a half an hour before we reinstall our fuser assembly back inside of our printer. We want to do this to make sure that all the acetone or isopropyl alcohol has evaporated from the unit. Also, some other words of warning. You only want to perform this procedure while the fuser has cooled down. If your printer has been operating, you want to shut off your printer and give your fuser section at least a half an hour to cool down before you perform this cleaning procedure. Also, as a note from Oki Data, Oki Data does not warranty this cleaning procedure. If you were to contact Oki Data and inform them of toner contamination within your unit, Oki Data is going to recommend that you buy another fuser assembly. So, Oki Data may not necessarily warrant this procedure, but you don't have anything to lose to try it. My advice would be, if you're in a print critical setting, you always want to have a spare fuser on hand ready to go. This concludes our video of how to clean your Okidata fuser section of toner contamination. However, should you have any questions or need any additional information about this procedure, don't hesitate to contact the fine people in our technical support department by dialing 1-800-826-6332. My name's Doug DeWitt, Transfer Paper Product Manager here at Condi Systems. My time is up, and I thank you for yours.